They, these are the pyramids, okay? And there's a great mystery as to how these pyramids were built. And you might have, on the internet, heard silly explanations like, aliens came and built the pyramids, okay? Or maybe the lost civilization of Atlantis gave the technology to the Egyptians to build the pyramids. And this is an example of confirmation bias. We think that we're smart and everyone before was stupid, okay? And what, and what you learn in this class is that these people had an imagination that allowed them to build the pyramids. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how they built the pyramids. All right, so as you can see, the pyramids are extremely complex structures, okay? And first of all, there's debate as to what the pyramid is. What are you taught in school what the pyramids are? What is it? Come on, you guys are taught all this in school, right? The two pyramid is what? It's a tomb, right? Okay, guys, it's not a tomb. Okay, it looks like a tomb, but it's not a tomb. It's a temple, right? Okay, so how do they build the pyramids? Um, so what happened was that they didn't have blueprints, they didn't have computers, but they had the imagination. So they could see the building of the pyramid in their heads. And what they did was they actually built it from the inside out. Okay? All right? So, again, it's hard for us to imagine that they, they would do this because it's like, wait, you don't have a pen, so you couldn't write it down. You don't have a computer, so you can process all the, all the information. They did it all in their heads. And that's the power of the human imagination. Okay? All right. Um, and as you can see, it was a massive undertaking, huge organization. It took about 20 years and lots and lots of people. And then the question then is, how were they able to organize in such a manner? And the answer again is empathy, the imagination. Someone had a vision, and this vision was so compelling that everyone knew exactly what part to play. Okay? Also, what's really important is that in school, you're taught that the pyramids were built because the pharaoh was God, and there's a tomb for the, for the pharaoh, okay? That's really insulting to the Egyptian people. Like all cultures, the pharaoh wanted what's best for his people, okay? So the pharaoh would, in his lifetime, undertake a lot of public works projects, okay, including canals, okay? So the, so the pyramids were just a public works project, a temple. Um, what's amazing about the pyramids is that we could not do the pyramids today, okay? Back to your point, we have computers. Guess what, we have all these machines, okay? And guess what? We cannot build the pyramids. Why? Well, because the way we work is different from the way they worked before. Let's go over the differences, okay? Ancient times, people had religious devotion. When they worked on a project like the temple, like, like the pyramids or whatever, the point was to bring heaven to earth, to bring God to earth, to create eternal peace. They felt that my dedication, my sacrifice, would make my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, all more prosperous, okay? That's why they worked so hard. Today, it's to make more money, okay? Second thing, vision. People back then had bigger brains, okay? Not bigger brains, but like stronger imagination. So in their heads, they were able to see the entire vision in their heads. And this vision was, it was able to pass on to other people as well. It was almost like they had telepathy. It was almost like they could see the same thing, okay? The structure of the pyramid was designed in a way that people saw the same image and they worked towards that image. Today, we focus on something called top-down process-oriented management, okay? The idea here is rather than work together, you just go and work a particular part. And then once you do that part, you go away, okay? So an example is maybe art class. Now, I'm not sure if you take art class, but you guys know like to produce a great piece of art, you stay in a room and you work really hard at it, okay? But in school, what do we do? Well, first we do is first thing we do is make you write a plan, right? And if you do the plan well, I give you 10%. Then after you do the plan, what do you do? You write the outline. Then you do a draft. Then you do an iteration, okay? You understand? We break it down into a process. And you think that this would lead to better results. It actually leads to worse results. 
okay? Because you no longer focus on the vision, you just focus on the process. And that's why today, everything we do sucks, okay? I can give you the greatest computers in the world, and you really couldn't do the pyramids, okay? I, I can give you the best machines, the best computers, it wouldn't matter, because you lack that vision. The last thing, and this is most important, is when you have vision, when you have religious purpose, everything you do is careful, okay? You put your best effort into doing it because you're trying to create eternity. Today, you try to do the least amount of work for the most amount of pay, right? So the idea today is to do it as fast as possible, as cheap as possible to maintain the budget, okay? So do you understand? It's not about how smart you are, it's about your purpose in working, it's about how you work. And that's why everything we do today is just crappy, okay? All right, um, let's go over some examples of tremendous human achievement, okay? This is the Hagia Sophia, um, and this was built in 532 in Constantinople. It's still in Istanbul. You can actually take a plane, get on a plane, and fly, and it's still there, guys, okay? This is a modern picture. So you can see the amount of attention and care put into architecture back then, okay? Because it's about bringing heaven to earth, creating heaven on earth. This, and you can see inside how beautiful it is, okay? And so every inch, every piece of the church is just beautifully constructed. Everyone who worked on it was working with the same vision and working with the same dedication. This is the Aachen Cathedral built in 1790, okay? And guys, this is what it looks like today. No different from what it looked like when it was first built. And guys, no one said this was built by aliens, okay? No one said this was built by the Atlanteans. So the idea that the Egyptians couldn't build the pyramids by themselves and had to rely on aliens, that's just a racist comment, okay? Um, also, Charlemagne, the first, Roman emperor, the first Holy Roman Emperor, he was buried, he's buried inside this cathedral, but no one's saying this is a tomb, okay? We all know it's a church. So the pyramids are a church, a temple to their gods. And once we understand that, then we can better understand how they built the pyramids, okay? Does that make sense? Okay, and this is what it looks like inside, okay? Again, this is today. You can actually get a plane, go to Germany, and go walk inside this church and see for yourself how beautiful it is. Back then, they put care and love into everything they did because, because they believed that what they did was to make a more godly spiritual world. Okay, the Manhattan Project, okay? This is probably the greatest achievement of humans in the 20th century. All right, and there were 100,000 scientists who worked on the Manhattan Project to build the nuclear bomb. Same concept where they believe that they were creating eternal peace on Earth, heaven on Earth, and that's why they worked so hard. And guess what? They were right, right? Because now with the atomic bomb, nations are afraid to go to war. Before the atomic bomb, World War I, World War II killed tens of millions of people. And even though there's still wars, they're not as devastating as before. Okay? All right, so this idea of bringing heaven to earth, it goes way back to the beginning of humanity. This is Gobele Tepe. Um, it was first built in 9600 9, 9, BCE. And this is considered the world's first temple. It's the first temple that we discover. We can assume that wherever humans go, they will build temples. Because, as I mentioned last class, humans are first and foremost religious. They express themselves through, they express their religion through art, architecture, music, dance, okay? And it's an amazing achievement um, because these pillars, okay, they're really tall. So we don't know how they were able to move these pillars into place. Okay, you can see how small people are and how big this is. But if you think about what we said about having a vision and then working together to achieve this vision, then it makes more sense. Okay, so let's discuss how they were able to build Kobe Tepe. And this process is important for us to understand because it repeats itself throughout human history, okay? So let's go over the process. Okay, the first is that there's always a charismatic leader. It could be a man, it could be a woman, but he or she has a vision for creating a temple, 
a place of God. Okay, that's what a temple is. It's a place. It's a place for God to live on earth. And he shares this vision with everyone, and everyone works hard to achieve this vision. Okay, but then the leader dies, and now you have different people competing to be the new leader. Okay, why? Because a temple, and it's really important for you guys to remember, a temple is always the most valuable real estate on earth. Okay? If you, if you are in a temple, people come to pray to you, right? So that they give you gifts, that they give you tribute. So what's happening in this time is that they would organize a religious festival um, once or twice a year. And people would have to bring gazelle, have to bring food as a tribute to the um, priests, and then they would celebrate it together, and then they would um, feast, okay? So if you're able to control this temple, you lived a very good life. You were a very powerful person, okay? And so there was, so when, when the first leader died, you would have a succession crisis, and they would vote who the next leader would be. And so what happened is, they would have these trials where they prove to each other who the gods favored, okay? So it's possible, maybe there are two hills, okay? You stand on one hill, I stand on another hill, and we'll see where the bird lands. If the, if the bird lands on my hill, then the gods favor me, okay? Because at this time, um, humanity believed that the mother goddess ruled over all. Because, because if, as humans at this time, you're concerned about two things, right? You're first concerned about farming, agriculture, fertility, and then you're concerned about having babies, okay? So that's why the mother goddess was important because the mother goddess provided more fertility for everyone, okay? Um, but then over time, what they realize is, you know what, we can just cheat, okay? And how do you cheat? You cheat by forming secret societies, okay? By getting people to follow you and then you swear blood oaths to each other and you also maybe have sex with each other and you become a faction, okay? And this led to a lot of political conflict. And the way they, set, they often settle this uh, dispute or debate is for human sacrifice, okay? So if your faction lost, you'd all be sacrificed. And we know this because under Gobele Tepe, there are tombs, okay, of human remains. So we assume that um, these people lost a power struggle and as such, they were all sacrificed together, okay? So in other words, power struggle, political conflict, uh, religious dispute, Human sacrifice, secret society, they go all the way back to human society, okay? All right, so this is Gobele Tepe today. Again, you can, you, can, you can get on a plane, fly to Turkey, and then go visit Gobele Tepe. Now, one thing that's really important for us to understand is that with our architecture, there's mythology in place, okay? And here we assume the mythology is the mother goddess with a bird in the sky, and this might be a human skull, okay? So there's a very complex, diverse mythology in place. We don't know what it is, okay? But they had a sophisticated mythology. 